One of my personal favorite things to think about is before the streaming era of music, pre-Spotify, pre-Apple Music, I mean, honestly, even pre-iTunes or pre-like iPod, back in the day when you physically had to go and buy the album on CD, cassette, vinyl, if you were that excited for the album, you would place a pre-order and they might give you a single for the album ahead of time, stuff like that where you really had to put up money ahead of time to own the music and not, you know, have a monthly subscription that allowed you to own a license to access a library of songs. It's just been something that I've been thinking about more and more recently. I actually made a tweet about it over on my Twitter at Vecman. Uh, if you don't follow me over there, you should. I made a tweet over there and then ended up deleting it because I wanted to do this video. But essentially, Metro Boomin had announced that he had said that he thinks he's only going to put one more album on DSPs like Spotify and Apple. And I think it's really interesting to see not only only him but also somebody like Kanye who earlier this year with Vultures 2 said that he would only release that album through Yeezy.com and through physical and digital releases that way where you would again have to pay for it up front. In a climate like right now in music where the subscriptions are going up due to inflation, uh, now you pay $11.99 for Spotify, I think it's like $11.99 or $12.99, maybe $10.99 for Apple Music. We're constantly having our prices increased for these monthly subscriptions that yes allow us to listen to 40 million, 50 million 60 million 70 million songs i don't know how many the number seems like it you know changes because every day thousands upon thousands of songs get put out there but we don't own any of that and it has become such a crucial thing that music is such a part of everybody's life like even before like i said before the ipod people still listen to music all day like this wasn't just a thing people had the walkman people had boom boxes people had you know record players in their homes people had big cd players with full-on stereo equipment for all of this analog stuff inside of their houses and i think it's really interesting that within a very short span the internet changed so much but at the same time we as consumers complain a lot about current things in today like for example a uh, favorite artist getting their music leaked and therefore having to push music back to write more music and create more to have some new material on an upcoming album or tour prices like tickets to taylor swift costing basically rent for people i mean the average american pr at least probably probably paying a month's worth of rent for one seat to one of her shows. Granted, it's not just her, it's every single artist across the board. If you look for any kind of decent seats, you're paying a minimum, I mean, nowadays, like 200, 300 bucks. I think, honestly, it's an interesting concept to picture. What if we did go back to just buying physical releases or buying full price digital albums. Personally me, I'm a big collector of vinyl, CDs, cassettes, anything physical. I like having an actual owned copy of it and I treat streaming services as almost kind of like a demo way of listening to music. If I hear an album and I thoroughly enjoy it, I will then go onto the artist's website or their label's website, wherever you can buy it, and I will order a physical copy of an album. I, I like to at least try to support the artist more and it's no hidden thing at all. I'm pretty sure everybody knows at this point that streaming services like Spotify and Apple Music pay, I mean, fractions of a penny per stream. So unless you go number one or you're doing some crazy amount of numbers, you have to fall back on brand deals, sponsorships, touring, things like that to be able to, you know, bring in money still. So that's why you see, I think a lot of people, somebody like Tower the Creator, start to focus more on fashion and all these other endeavors because not only do they just make more off of going into these personal little ventures, it's just honestly more freeing for them to to express himself in a new way rather than go make the same album over and over again and make basically nothing off of it unless they're relying on a tour to be successful. If we all went back to buying physical, I think a lot of these issues would immediately be alleviated. Number one, I think we would see uh, immediate changes from streaming services. They would have to be more transparent with how they were paying artists, how much they were paying artists, and how much they were paying artists versus labels. Because in the current climate, the person who gets shafted the hardest is the artist the person who's actually putting out the work, putting out the effort to make a body of work for us, the fans, to enjoy. And that's why, honestly, you just see most people typically shitting out, you know, 25 song albums. There's a ton of them, especially in 2020, whenever the whole deluxe edition thing came about, where people were releasing like 15, 20 track deluxe editions, like a week after the first record came out as a way of just boosting streams and boosting sales. It is so much more profitable for an artist and for a label to shit out 45 mediocre songs 
that literally three fourths of them could have been cut for a final record than to actually sit there and put in the effort on producing a quality album that will by word of mouth generate hype that people will then go out and hand over their money for. I feel like if we went back to a way where physical media was the only way to obtain music, it was the only way to listen to music, at least up front, it would be an insane difference for the music industry as far as quality goes. I really think we would see a, a massive switch up. And obviously the internet could still be used. A lot of smaller up and coming artists could use the internet to still generate a buzz. And I think that is perfectly fine. That's the number one pro of releasing music on the internet is that people who don't have easy access to recording studios or uh, distributors for their music, stuff like that, can easily go ahead, record something on GarageBand and put it out there on SoundCloud. SoundCloud or any other, you know, like Bandcamp type of website that people can easily listen to it. And if they want to support it, they can fork over their own money. But in this day and age, I also feel like we are at such a point where not only is the artist getting shafted, we the users are getting shafted from the post like album release stuff that comes with it, uh, mainly being concerts. Like I just referred to earlier, Taylor Swift basically having to charge rent pricing, which granted, it's not necessarily her. A lot of it is scalping as well. I know whenever tickets go live sure there are packages that can go i'm sure far into the thousands of dollars for seats but again it's another issue with companies like live nation and ticketmaster that know the hype is there the end user doesn't have to worry about scalping because the person who's selling the tickets up front first party is going to scalp them ticketmaster is one of the shittiest most fucking stupid companies in the world and live nation should be fucking ashamed of doing the things that they do they take artists that people look forward to seeing like taylor swift like the weekend like all these crazy massive artists and immediately at launch will jack up the ticket prices and they know people will buy them because people have been buying them that's why you see people like taylor swift still selling out arenas with two thousand dollar seat tickets that's just outrageously overpriced and i think everybody can agree just isn't worth it at the end of the day. I still do think that obviously if you did have artists putting out physical releases, that whole thing would just die down completely. We would go back to the days of I would say probably like 300 bucks being like the max price for a ticket, which like that's still a lot of money, but in comparison to nowadays when artists are charging 17 like 100 2000 dollars for like a VIP pass, it's insanity. Immediately if you let artists put out physical releases or digital albums of like exclusively through their storefronts, not on DSPs, I am confident you would see ticket prices decrease. They would more than likely be making more profit off of those releases up front anyways. Not to mention, they wouldn't have to go look for sponsors for tours like Live Nation, who then can get to set the ticket prices themselves, or stuff like Monster Energy, a lot of the other like weird like brands that have ended up sponsoring tours and funding tours for people to go out and, you know, do a nationwide, you know, United States tour, and then immediately they get full control over everything else on the back end. I think feel like if artists made more money they would then be able to put in their own money into the tour fund it themselves and set actual realistic ticket prices that people can way more afford than than the current slate of things and honestly it's another reason why i really do appreciate not super you know well-known artists uh i remember last year or the year before for the tyler the creators call me if you get lost tour i was super worried that you know i wasn't gonna be able to afford tickets and i was looking forward to it i had never seen tyler before and thankfully the floor tickets were like 80 bucks for pre-sales so immediately like that that's a great deal in the modern day but i remember as soon as they sold out tickets were going for 400 bucks it's that kind of thing where obviously scalping's been around forever but in the modern day scalping is not only just happening on the end user side or people who are stealing tickets and then you know reselling them to end users but those were official platinum seats quote official platinum from ticketmaster so there's no winning for us anymore we have to deal with the fallback we artists put out good music and we want to go see them live perform it and we can't because Ticketmaster wants thousands upon thousands of dollars for good not even good mediocre seats realistically like very shitty nosebleed seats they're asking like a hundred and some bucks for minimum and then to top it all off we're at a point in the economy right now where if you go look at Ticketmaster I think it was Jennifer Lopez she just canceled her entire world tour because she wasn't moving tickets because people don't have 
the money right now to back that kind of thing, especially at the price that Live Nation wants to ask for those types of seats. Nobody wants to pay 200, 300 bucks for a lower bowl seat at a concert. People want to pay, I would assume the max, like $150 for a decent seat at a concert. I still genuinely think that obviously, and artists do make a lot of money off their tours and i am happy that that is a way for them to make the money from the music that they work on but we're at such a point right now where i mean i think it just recently uh, asap rocky announced his new album don't be dumbs coming out and he announced it with a new aug lineup for of clothes so like clearly he has further plans with this clothing line he has a fallback and this is the kind of stuff that makes artists not put out music anymore is that they will make more money off of some other thing that they're doing as long as they can continue doing that they don't need to worry about the music side they can come back to that every four five six seven years later put out a new album generate a lot of hype generate a lot of sales right then in that moment and then go back to doing a side thing it's such a unhealthy climate for both artists and the end user that i really think like record labels have to get a shake up in my uh, now deleted tweet i had mentioned that i'm pretty sure that tyler the creator would be like the perfect person to try to cause this kind of shake up in the industry he not not only has had I think uh, like for the past couple of years some of the biggest record sales like as far as like physical vinyl goes but he has the audience for it that is into that kind of thing owning a physical copy of a record he always does good things as far as including little extras and little special things for those who buy the physical copies and I would love to see what would happen if even if it wasn't a full-time thing if for like one month or not even a month give it a week if for one week Tyler the creator said this is a new album that I have for one week only you can only buy it in stores on physical media being cassettes cds and vinyls and i would love to see how the public would react i think at first people would obviously be outraged people would be like this is bullshit like why isn't it coming to spotify nobody's gonna listen to it whatever blah 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 but he has a fan base that i think would easily turn out for record stores like on the release day you would have a lineup of people it would be awesome to see midnight releases come back to see lines of people outside of a record store at midnight for a big album release they open the doors at midnight they have the album playing overhead you can you know have people there talk to about the record talk to about your favorite thing you can pick up your copy go home listen to it in your car whatever you want to do it is so excruciatingly painful that the majority of people in the modern day including myself won't ever get that experience as far as things right now are going I would love to have that experience. The only time you can get anything close to that is going to a concert tour where you can maybe meet somebody who, you know, is just like chilling like by the, their lonesome. They just want to talk about the music, want to talk about the artist, stuff like that. It would be awesome to see stuff like that come back and artists would benefit more. The listeners would benefit more in the long run. And the only, I guess, necessarily con to it all is that there would be a much higher pressure on an artist to deliver with a good quality album. But again, it benefits the end user and I mean, kind of, I guess, hurts the artist. But like at the same time, for the majority of people, I think that they would immediately stop going to certain people and spending money on certain people's records if this became the thing. Quality would have to be a number one over quantity obviously people factor in you know you can't charge uh, 30 dollars for a five track ep unless it's literally the, one of the greatest like eps of all time i do still think there would be an absolute mass amount of people that would rather hand over money in the beginning for a record that they have a feeling is going to be good be surprised by it being good and enjoying it listening to it constantly and then benefiting from having cheaper ticket sales not having to pay a monthly subscription all these different things that you are tied to unless we can move back to the physical media again it's an issue of people right now especially in this day and age all humans want is more convenience the more convenient something is the more they're going to use it but i think we have to take a loss if we want to benefit any more from music uh we're at a point where nothing is going to change we're at a pretty hard standstill with digital streaming and I would really love to see it walk back. And I know one of the other arguments is that, oh, well, if they put it out like as like an early time or whatever, like the music will just get leaked. That's fine. That's perfectly fine. It'll only make record labels have to put albums up or push them up to release earlier, which may hurt some in the long run for the fact that if an album isn't finished in a set amount of time, then they can't have records ready to go. It has to get delayed, whatever. But I mean, look at one of the biggest rap albums of all time, The Eminem Show. It got leaked months in advance and even though it was leaked months in advance they still had enough time to go back 
fix things, put out this record that, again, the whole album was leaked until I think it was like LimeWire or Napster or uh, the, one of like the major piracy websites. And still, it's one of the greatest selling hip hop albums of all time. And it went diamond. I don't know. I don't think that leaks is a good enough excuse to say that, oh, well, this shouldn't happen because of that. I, I just genuinely think that it would be a cool thing. And it's a thing that I've thought of for a while now. I've had this kind of thing on my mind for like the past year or so, but finally decided to sit down and actually make a video about it, talk about it. And I would love to see your guys' thoughts as well. Uh, obviously, would you move back to physical media if possible? Or if there was a way where you could pre-order an album and you would get a link to a digital album the like as soon as it comes out that midnight that you can download, put on your phone, something like that, would you do that? I think that would, again, be sick. And I think, again, it would benefit everybody in the long run. But... This is just video me ranting. I just had this on my mind. I had another video planned, but this has literally been on my mind all day long. Like, especially, it's just been itching at me. So I wanted to sit down, make a video, talk with you guys about it. But yeah, man, absolutely. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you guys didn't enjoy, be sure to hit that like button. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Again, fucking support on the past, like, two weeks worth of videos has been outrageous, dude. My best month on YouTube so far. So Thank you guys so much. I appreciate the love. Absolutely. Cannot wait to get more stuff done working on a couple of other video projects right now. And do not worry if you were here for the reactions. There is some coming. There are some coming and they're coming very soon. Reactions are still coming up. This is not me killing reactions in any way or, you know, changing up the content all the way. It's just these videos allow me to just kind of talk and vent my general appreciation for music to you guys so and i mean from some of the comments that i've seen people do enjoy doing it as well for themselves so hell yeah i'll sit here and talk all day about music with you guys if that's you know cool <laughs> but yeah absolutely man i love you guys thank you guys so much for the support and yeah it's been beckman peace out